Hello and welcome to ICANN on Air. As professional accountants, we know the combination. I'm talking about the combination of traditional finance skills with accounting expertise. Offer a powerful combination that sets us apart. Oh, yes. With our bespoke experience and deep understanding of the language of business. Uh, our knowledge of standards, our knowledge of principles, our knowledge of regulations, our knowledge of laws, our knowledge of procedures and technology. We will be a skill set set of people that will be in high demand by our stakeholders. But so really, accountants, well, outside the sea suits involving making strategic decisions or providing meaningful financial analysis in interpretations and in modeling assumptions. And we now know that we can learn the role that provides growth beyond the historical financials if we are attuned with these skills. Oh, well, joining me on a question and answer segment of our program today to help us with the requirements that will help us sharpen our Excel skills and gain more deeper understanding about financial modeling. And what the professional accountants need to know is David Brown, FCA. David Brown is managing partner of Down DB Consulting. He has trained more than 20,000 people on analytics and hosts webinars weekly. An international trainer and consultant for the World Bank. He's been a consultant for World Bank for seven years and has been awarded the Microsoft Most Valuable Professional for four years consecutively. Oh, well, more on our esteemed guests shortly in this program. We also feature today a few ideas about the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, some few tidbits about the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. I would like to share with you, our professional colleagues and friends of the profession. Please stay connected. We shall be back. Full blast with you very shortly. esteemed professional colleague and one that has garnered so many accolades home and abroad i bid you welcome to icon on air thank you very much thank you very much honorable aki and uh, uh thank you for having me beautiful and the subject today we just go straight on financial modeling and what we professional accountants indeed friends of the profession our stakeholders needs to know. And so um, to put a frame around what this subject is going to be like, you are a financial modeler and you are an accountant. May I ask you, David, how long have you been an accountant? And when really did you start building models? 
Hmm. So uh, thanks for that question. Thanks a lot. Uh, how long have I been an accountant? Well, it depends on how you define accountant, right? So I studied accounting at Bayer University. I finished from there in 1999. Uh, but technically, am I an accountant after finishing BSc accounting? So if you agree that I'm an accountant, then I became an accountant in 1999. But if I had to have done ICANN, well, I think I finished ICANN 20 years ago. I'm thinking. I'm, just, I'm not very sure. But I think it's like about 20 years ago. So depending on which one you choose, um, maybe let's say 20 years, give and take. Super. Either we take it at the debit side or the credit <laughs> side. The important thing is that it balances. And yeah. uh, you are a professional accountant. And therefore, uh, when you start modeling how will you define modeling when did you start when did i start modeling um okay so i think well i know in hindsight now right so before i would have said oh i started at so so time but the moment you open maybe a spreadsheet and you type two things into it you put an input into the spreadsheet you do a calculation and you get an output you have built a model because really, a model is just inputs, calculations, and outputs. That's all a model is. So you, you put in some inputs, and then there are calculations, then you have an output, and then you make a decision based on that output. Then you tweak your inputs, you change your inputs, and then the calculations change and your output change. So you're now doing iterations on a model, just three cells. But a financial model, the main output is financial statements, so a P&L, balance sheet, cash flow. At least you have those three. Then you have a financial model. So based on that output of a financial, financials, I think probably I started modeling like 17 years ago. Oh, interesting. So yeah. you were an accountant on the debit side. You got to be an accountant on the credit <laughs> side. We were able to balance the fact that um, some close to about 20 years ago, and then you started the iteration and the modeling 17 years ago. Very interesting. Now, yeah. what would you say um, you knew as an accountant earlier on? you wish you knew as an accountant earlier on about modeling? I, I think uh, I would say understanding that a model is really, it, it's extremely tied to strategic decision-making in an organization. And for you to make strategic decisions, the accountant needs to change a little bit of what they do. You know, we are always IFRS, IFRS, which is a, a good thing. But we need to tie our numbers to actual productivity on ground. And tying it to actual productivity doesn't necessarily have to follow IFRS. It needs to follow the certain metrics that kind of are, are correlated to progress in your organization. And those are the things you model. So you're not really modeling just p and and balance sheet as IFRS, although you may need to model for IFRS sake. But you need to model for productivity to understand the metrics that are correlated with performance. So those are the kind of things that as an accountant, I know we, we kind of focus too much on the standard standards. We need to also focus a little bit more on productivity and how we can measure certain things that will add value and actually make the organization meet its goals uh, faster. And that's what you model. So I say that and many other things, but I, I think I'll stick with that for now, yeah. Be beautiful. Uh, I, I like to do, do something here, and which may resonate with um, chartered accountants of my class. Back in the day, um, when Lotus One Two Three came on, yes. we'll go on the computer, and then just like you said, enter a particular cell to enter another another cell another two. You click on a plus, it makes four. And then it iterated and went into a much more sophisticated half plus one quarter and all that kind of stuff. You begin to mm -hmm. crack your, your brain and then you put it. And somebody came around and said, okay, oh, I can put a macro, you know, did mm -hmm. a bit uh, programming like thing and did a macro. I was able to help us get some of those answers. Would mm -hmm. you call that elements of modeling in the strict sense of it? Yes. Yeah, so, so modeling is a very broad term, right? So the, there's data modeling. I mean, everything you do that eventually have automated an action. So you've automated the process of 
putting something somewhere and something else comes out is a model. That's that's a model. You've 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 built a model. Now uh, for the macros you talked about, that's like a programming language attached to um, Microsoft Office tools. So Word, PowerPoint, Excel is all they use it a lot for, and that is you just um, automating a repetitive task. So if you've done something repetitively, you want to just automate that process and make yourself more efficient. So yes, macros are, are very critical. But then macros can also take in viruses. So a lot of times, a lot of big organizations will say, look, I want my spreadsheet to be mac macro-less, no macro at all. But, okay. but what people tend to forget is that uh, when you are building models is macros should be the last thing you do. Because if you think about it, take Excel as a house. This is a house. You are building everything in this house called your model. Then there are certain repetitive tasks in that model. You need to get another house called VBA. It's a separate house. And you're going to tell that house, hey, I need you to automate something in this house. That VBA house must go to the, the uh, Excel house and do the automation, isn't it? That traveling from here to here is actually inefficient. So you need to first of all think, can I just do everything that I wanted this guy to do in my own house? Can I just build it myself in a way that is very efficient in my own house without having to get VBA to come and do it for me? And that mm. is the best practice build everything in Excel, automate it in Excel, and uh, that'll be far more efficient. So you don't have the risk of viruses coming in. But technology has moved on from macros so much. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Oh, beautiful. Thanks for that elucidation, um, Mr. David Brown. What skills do you need to be a world-class modeler? Hmm, what skills do you need to be a world-class modeler? Um, a couple of, I think a year ago or so, is it two years ago now, um, um, I, I was talking to uh, some of my um, colleagues or, or people in the same profession in, the, in Canada, and um, they wanted me to do a talk on, on something similar to this, what skills. And the, the general skills, I'll give you the general skills and I'll talk about them a little bit. The general skills are accounting number one, which is what we've done. So accountants, to me, every accountant should be a modeler because it brings things to life. So accounting skills, you need finance skills, you need spreadsheet, you need to know how to use a spreadsheet. And um, the most popular spreadsheet is Excel, of course. So you need to really have advanced level skills on, on using spreadsheets. You need to have a bit of corporate finance uh, um, um, knowledge, but really with accounting, finance, Excel, you're good to go to build a basic model, right? Yeah. And yeah. and so I think those are the beginning skill sets. But one very important skill set is you need negotiation skills. You need basically uh, interpersonal skills. One, you, you need to get data from whoever you're modeling. You need to talk to the various departments and stuff to get real factual data of what's happening. You need to understand the correlations of uh, what, when this goes up, this goes down. You need to understand business. So you need a lot of soft skills. And that's one of the things I think I've learned. It's not just about technical. If you learn the technical skills alone, you will be a modeler that sits at one corner building models. But if you learn the technical skills and the interpersonal skills and relationships, then you'll be able to be a modeler that can do the technical, but can also talk to the deal makers and understand the bigger picture of deals. Because that, that is where the benefit is. So quite a lot of skill sets uh, required. Hmm. Fantastic point. Thank you very much. Uh, talking about the hard skills, sometimes when you talk about technology, hard skills and then the soft skills, so marry them together to be a fantastic uh, modeler. You are talking about Canada. Uh, did you have it's the Financial Model Institute it's based in Canada? And if so, or wherever they may be based, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about them? Yes, actually. So one thing about modeling is, you know, when there are no set of rules for doing something, then everybody does it their own way. And I can tell you that there have been incidences where companies have lost billions of dollars because one person made one silly mistake in the model. So the model, there's one company, a very large company in the US, they, they, they declared dividends, some huge dividends. And later after a couple of days they had to come back to the public and say sorry we can't declare dividends we actually made a loss somebody put a minus sign instead of a plus sign somewhere and that made them declare dividends when they were not supposed to declare dividends so 
having a structured way for building models is a very good idea. And, uh, and around um, 14 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, I was in the UK where uh, a set of modelers, worldwide top modelers, came together in the UK to try and standardize modeling. So that was in, in London. And we kind of, what birthed, what came out of that was something called the FAST modeling standards, F-A-S-T, FAST modeling standards. So if you're an accountant right now, you can go online and type FAST, you get a methodology of how you model for free. That's one. But the FAST modeling standards, like everybody, we all didn't agree as to what's best practice. There's some things I don't like about the standard as well, but at least that was a start. About um, four years ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, another set of modelers came together, and this time around, they wanted to set up an institution, a proper institution, a certification body for financial modeling. And that was based in Canada, and it's called the Financial Modeling Institute. That, to me, is the number one institute for any accountant speaking or watching this right now. Go to Financial Modeling Institute's website, and there are three exams. There is the Advanced Financial Modeler Certification, which is level one. Chartered Financial Modeler Certification, which is level two, and Master Financial Modeler Certification, which is level three. But this is unlike other professional bodies because you don't need to do all three because modeling is such a huge thing that everybody needs different pieces. Not everybody needs everything. But Advanced Financial Modeler is the first level. And listen to that. That's Advanced Financial Modeler, not Basic, because there's no such thing as Basic Financial Modeler. You cannot be a basic financial modeler. You must start from advanced. You need to know accounting to a good level. You need to know finance. You need to know Excel. So you're already in advanced skill set before you start building models. So level one is advanced financial modeler. And frankly, that's enough for most organizations or most people that work in organizations. If you're a high-level consultant, you're doing a lot of business plans, you're advising, you're doing project finance related deals, then you may need level two, maybe a chartered financial modeler. But level three, you can forget about that. It's for maybe crazy people like me that have been doing models for 20 years or so. Or people like Elon Musk and people taking people to space and people preventing. Well, we have accountants who prevent planes from coming down through making sure that the models and the processes are foolproof. Yes. I like that. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. David Brown. Um, mm. So... I haven't gone through the certification process, applying ourselves as uh, financial accountants, as chartered accountants, and then we get on to modeling. What career opportunities are open to accountants who become financial modelers? Hmm. So, excellent question. Thank you for that uh, question. Um, career opportunities. Uh, let me start from you're not even needing a job. Let me start from there. So I think while in university, we we forget that we are in a very special place where there's a lot of time. You think you don't have time, you have time. It's when you start work, you know you don't have time. So <laughs> getting the skill set while you're in university is very critical. And right from there, you could get one or two certifications that you could start building models freelance for people right from university. You pay your university bills. It will pay your bill straight away, I can assure you. Um, you. You build a very simple model, a minimum probably you'll be half a millionaire. So that pays your monthly salary and you can do that in the weekend. So career-wise, you can start building models ad hoc for uh, deals and people and, uh, and start earning money from there. But then because of your modeling skill set, nearly the entire financial industry is open to you because everybody needs modelers. There's no finance in the no, no finance role that does not require modeling skills and uh, so you're already set for uh, you have set yourself apart from your peers in uh, interviews when you know modeling so because again and you know modeling you need to know the numbers well so it's not that oh i need to cram is 31 what's it about you need to know it because you're building models around it so you will know in ins and outs of your accounting like like no no other person because yeah. you have the, those modeling skills. So I, I think it will polish you as an accountant, to polish you as a finance person, and then it will polish you as a business person, as an understanding what makes business tick, what is the driver of a business. Because 
to build a model, you need to understand drivers. So what drives the business? How can you say profitability will go by 22%? What happens when it rains? Tomorrow, let's assume rainfall was increased by, you had more than abnormal, abnormal levels of rainfall next year. How does that affect your business? As a modeler, you should be able to answer that. Okay, rainfall, statistically based on the data, there's a correlation between drop in revenue by, uh, or maybe there's a regression, the regression rate is what, 70%. So you you will know the numbers in a deeper sense and mm. super, yeah, super valuable. I, I don't mm. know which career you can't do, really, I don't. Mm. Mm. Fantastic point. And um, Mr. David Brown, the next question I'm going to pose to you, uh, I will say it a bit slowly. I'll say it a bit slowly because um, here in our audience watching, of course, are people who have been chartered accountants for ages long before the computers, and they are still seeking for knowledge. And then at the other end of the game, will be young aspiring students uh, wishing to come into uh, the field. And usually, when techies, please permit me to use the word, techies like you come on and talk and it's free flowing, uh, impression normally, oh, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, yeah. Just a matter of pressing a button, burn the midnight oil, and then goes off. And so is the reason why I'm going to ask you this slowly. And please take your time to explain it. I, to I'm us. already scared. I'm already scared. So <laughs> since, I'm, since I'm already modeling now, I can tell you nothing to scare about. Get it. <laughs> What would you say is the most difficult thing to grasp about financial modeling? Hmm. What would I say is the most difficult thing to grasp about financial modeling? Okay, so, well, uh, as you said, it's a kind of a loaded question. And the problem what I have is I have hindsight, right? So I think one of the most difficult things to grasp for most people is the the myth that modeling is extremely difficult when people hear financial modeling they just like oh no it's just, that's too much it's too difficult so grasping the fact that it is not difficult and there is a proper process for actually learning how to build models and best practices around it so that first thing is a bit difficult to grasp that it's not complex no it's not complex but then another difficult thing to grasp is that, yes, it can get complex if you allow, if you fail, if you fall, if you, if you don't follow certain rules, it becomes super, super complex. And simplicity is the best way to handle that complexity. That's another thing to grasp. Simplicity is the best way to handle the complexity. And for me, in the last, uh, what, it's actually more than 17 years, I think. I started modeling before I was an accountant, actually. So um, I, I kind of wrote down my six principles of be thinking like a financial modeler. Because one of the things you should, difficult things to also grasp is you jump into Excel. You, you get the financials and you just jump in and start doing stuff. That is not the way to go. You need to step back and, and have a big picture view of the business. And I think that's also a difficult thing to grasp. Have a big picture view of the business. There's some models that I have I've built, right, that I spent three weeks understanding the business, even a month understanding every single thing about the business without going to Excel to build anything, asking questions, doing interviews, understanding the business. So I think that's a difficult thing for a lot of people to grasp, so they're ready to jump into Excel. That's wrong. So, so I think um, having a big picture view, understanding that the soft skills are necessary for you to now use the hard skills to build a model. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic point. Uh, so let me let, let, let me drag you. Uh, you see, by way of <laughs> football, <laughs> you you got this uh, guy that has dribbled you round and round. Instead of shooting to score, and you say, "Oh my God!" He comes back, dribbles you again, and then show you that uh, yes, you are working with the masters. Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier, 
uh, about the institute where we can go to the website to we'll do first level exams, second level exams. Uh, so we go for the, for the first level exams, you try your hands, you are focused, and you are not able to, to pass the exams. You can't go to the second level naturally without passing the first. Yes. And then you try again, uh, just like I, I can professional exams, you fail again, and then uh, atrophy sets in, ennui mm. sets in. Yeah. You begin to wonder, should I continue or should I quit? Mm. What advice would you want to give to people who find themselves in that kind of quagmire? Um, will you want mentorship? Will you there are there are places you would like to refer them to um, to learn? Can they come by way of group to learn just like we do in study groups and all that kind of kind of stuff? What would be your advice? Um I, I think it's important to learn best practices as early as possible. Um yeah, I've been saying I've been modeling for let's say 20 years, but frankly speaking. I probably started proper modeling maybe 13 years ago because my first seven years was just doing doing my own. It's not not efficient. So it's important mm -hmm. you learn the ropes, learn best practices. And I think now that there's an institute, Financial Modeling Institute, go there. There's some free resources there. Go download all, go and just go through all their website and download as many free resources as possible. Yeah. Then for us, uh, for me, I've been training for the last 20, more than 20 years. And a lot of what I train is really modeling related. So if you go to a, a YouTube channel, if you go and type D Brown Consulting, for example, you see at least 150 videos for free. And you can learn, there's some quite a lot of them that are modeling. There's one credit, credit finance modeling. There's some very interesting modeling topics that we've covered uh, on our channel. You could You could check those out as well. Um, so if you fail, I mean, failure, that's, to me, what have you, you ask yourself, what have you benefited from that? You get a result mm. and you see the things that you didn't do well and the things mm. that you did well. So it's just, is there a report card to go and polish those things that, uh, you didn't really do, do that well. Uh, mm. And I don't think it's much about the certification. It's more about the interest and the skill. You're already mm. an accountant. Everybody here is an accountant. That's the most critical of the skills you need to learn. You have it already. So mm -hmm. the confidence now is probably, okay, learn spreadsheet skills. And what I'll do is I'll I'll share a free Excel training that I've developed for, we've trained already 20,000 people on it. I'll probably share the link. Go and do that Excel training to kind of get yourself comfortable uh, for free there. And then uh, you're already an accountant. You should You should jump into it and build a model. Uh, we have boot camps that we are planning as well. So I'll be sharing all this with, with ICANN. Of course, we also have, do a good course. So do a good course as well. Uh, 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 for the last uh, 14, no, for the last 16 years or so, we, we have a, a, a flagship course on financial modeling. I think it's probably the most popular modeling course in Nigeria right now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the Advanced Financial Modeler Certificate course. And mm. uh, it's tied to the financial modeling, the Canadian Financial Modeling Institute. Mm. And actually, I think we're probably the first training institute worldwide to be registered as a training uh, organization for Financial Modeling Institute. We're probably the first worldwide because I, I saw our name, I didn't see anybody else's until many people came. So we, we, we've tied that to the certification. So if you do that, you'll be able to get uh, certified. And another resource you should go to is Office Training Hub officetraininghub.com. You see some free courses there and there's some modeling courses there as well. But there are many courses online, but I just want you to learn the best practice. So first, go to Financial Modeling Institute, download all the resources there because there's so many quackery stuff out there. You will learn bad practice. Learn best practice from the beginning. Uh, uh, and maybe I'll give you some eight principles I have uh, eight, before the end, maybe how to what what I've distilled everything about modeling into into six really into six core principles. So maybe with those principles too, you'll be able to uh, do the right thing and learn in the right way. Yeah. Thank you very much. There are certain things to set just now. I'm sure our friends who are not accountants who are watching. Uh, I got a call from quite a number of them. There are lawyers. There are engineers. 
Uh, of course, uh, there are hardcore practitioners in public uh, space who yes. perhaps like me are hearing what you are saying, being the very first worldwide Nigerian, a chartered accountant. These are some of the flagships that we should be flying. I'm yes. so very happy and so very proud that um, you are making all those waves. One. Secondly, you also said that many of these things that are free for people to go check. Take that first step. We're going to get all those links. We're going to sh share it widely with the Institute. And students who have always bugged me, who want to learn, who want to learn, who want to learn, they have a place to be able to learn. Can't see. I can on air. If you are just joining in, this is our I can on air program. Today, I've been fielding questions to Mr. David Brown. Mr. David Brown, from the way you look at him, free knowledge, one of the things that the Institute of Terror Accountants of Nigeria is trading in, really the reason why I can on air is on. And we'll be looking at financial modeling, what professional accountants need to know, what you students wishing to come into the profession need to know. If you have questions, please Field these questions to us, and Mr. Brown will be willing and ready to answer them. I have one here, Mr. Brown. What is the relevance of oh, okay? Um, what is the relevance of financial modeling to the public sector from Mr. Ogunshola? Good. Hi, Mr. Ogunshola. Thanks for the question. Um, question is: what is public sector doing? What plans do public sector have? Do they have any plans at all for the future? Are there any uh, plans they have for ensuring that uh, public goods, uh, people, the public gets uh, public goods at the, the right kind of level of service that is required? So public sector have KPIs as well. They have targets. They have things that they, they need to ensure that they give the public, right? So financial modeling doesn't mean money. It's not like profit, profit, profit. But the public sector needs to make an excess return, a revenue over expenditure, or else they will go under. They don't call it profit, but it's still profit. Yeah, we know we know that as accountants. So, regardless, any fine, any anybody that works with money in any way needs a model. So, since public sector works with money, they definitely need to be able to plan effectively and strategize and forecast. So, you definitely need a model when you're doing budgeting. Budgeting is modeling. It's just they're modeling for one year, but the MTEF, for example, the medium term expenditure uh, uh, framework is, is three years. So they do a three year plan. That's a model. So as long as you have inputs, calculations, and outputs, and your outputs are financials, you have a model. And definitely the public sector needs that. Hmm. Beautiful. Thanks for, for the elucidation. And um, hmm. I know. You mentioned, I think I'll be doing justice to a lot of people. Uh, you talked about some principles that you're going to share with us, and uh, perhaps that will help to satisfy you know, the question I was going to pose to you about resources that you can recommend for accountants seeking financial modeling expertise. You, you already talked about them. So can we have this your personal six or eight principles that you would like to recommend for us. Okay, so um, I did a talk uh, at the Financial Modeling Institute uh, two years ago, and I was thinking what kind of talk should I do? And then I tried to distill my, then it was I think 18 years of experience in modeling, and try and distill it to some principles I've learned about what mo what modelers should know. And then I broke it down into like, there's a thought process that goes into being a very good modeler. You need to basically think like a financial modeler. And what does it mean to, to think like a financial modeler? I broke it down into six principles. So my, my first, the first principle is thinking like an architect. That's principle one. You think like an architect. And what does that mean? When an architect is trying to do his project, right? He's drawing and he's, he's kind of analyzing everything the weather, the this, the that, is how this beautiful thing he wants to do, will it fall or not fall? It, it, 
every single thing he's thinking about is the way an architect thinks, which is uh, at the end of the day, whatever I'm given, I'm giving the engineer to now build. And the architect has to really think of everything and the things that are not thought about, he needs to think. So same thing for modeling. You really need to think uh, like an architect, understand the end before the beginning, the beginning before the end, as in understand everything about it and know uh, deeper in a deep sense what drives this business to profitability. You do a lot of research before you even build the model. So building the model to me is the engineering bit. You need to think like an architect first. So that's principle one. Uh, principle two is keep it simple. Principle two is keep it simple. There are situations where you need to do a certain calculation. You can write one very nice complex formula. And sometimes we get very proud of our complicated formulas. That's a completely wrong way to go. You need to break down that complex formula into its bits. And in your model, have even seven different sections that add up to one instead of one massive thing that even you yourself would, will not understand. Two months from now, you won't even understand what you wrote. So keep it simple. That's a second uh, principle. The third principle is to realize that there are always two sides to everything. There are always two sides to every story. So when, as accountants, we know that net assets is what? What's net assets? But there are two sides to net assets, right? You can come from the asset side to calculate net assets. You can come from the liability side to calculate net assets. So there are two sides. There's always two sides to every story. Understand both sides. So when you see one side, ask yourself, what's the other side of this story? and understand at least those uh, two sides to that story. That gives you a better context and makes you a better modeler. My third, okay, my fourth uh, principle is visualize the model before you build it. To me, this is the number one principle and it's something that I've always done, uh, which I think that's why um, um, it's, it's some of my models are, are pretty, look very complicated, but they are not because I have visualized it. So before you go into building a model, Let's say you're building a model for a, I don't know, a fish farm or something. Okay, so visualize, okay, I'm going to have fish farm. There's going to be two plots of land. We're going to clear the weeds. We're going to do this. Where are we going to sell? Are we exporting? Okay, what's Export Promotion Council? Can we take uh, benefits from that? You, you visualize it. So visualize the whole business and then visualize it in your spreadsheet. Just visualize it. Once you visualize it fully, then you build it. So that's uh, principle number four. Um, then there are two more principles. Uh, principle number five is identify risks and uncertainty. You need to sit down and identify all the risks and uncertainties in that model because those risks and uncertainties you've identified in the business, you're going to model it. And that's where you're going to build scenario and sensitivity analysis. That's where you're going to do stochastic analysis where you probably do Monte Carlo simulation. That's very advanced. We may not need to do that. But you, you, once you identify those risks and uncertainty, you now understand, okay, these are key critical drivers that I need to include in my model to answer the critical question of if this happens, what happens here? And that's what caused the economic crisis for the world in the, the last, uh, the, the dot-com bust and the, also the uh, um, um, real estate crisis in the US. They did, not, they did not put the risk of, okay, if property prices fall, what will happen by a certain percentage? If they had done that, they would have the models we show the models will clearly show that everything goes under uh, mm -hmm. but they didn't do that very few people did and i'm sure there's a film i can't remember the name now you would watch them shorting the stocks of many of these companies and making billions at the end because they knew that this thing's going to crash so on mm -hmm. identify risk and uncertainty uh, very important then lastly, the last principle for me is you need to structure or strike a balance uh, um, between value and cost of information. Strike a balance between value and cost of information. Somebody like me that likes to be a perfectionist is very is not good for business. You, you're going to build a model. You say, no, I must get how much does the teacher earn? Is it uh, 50,000 Naira or 52,000 Naira? And that 2,000 Naira is what you're trying to find out. That's very inefficient. So you mm. need to understand there's some information that you don't need to get. It's a waste of time and it's going to cost you 10 Naira to get the information. Well, you have two Naira. It makes no sense. So mm. you need to strike a balance between uh, uh, value and cost of information. So those are the six uh, principles.
Thank you for sharing those nuggets uh, with us. And uh, Karawari Alo asked a question earlier. Uh, can a knowledge in business analysis help me as a financial modeler? I thought you answered that earlier. Yes, definitely. Knowledge in business analysis. You need you need to knowledge in business analysis. So you understand the business, what drives the business for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now talking about the CF CFI information, is M FMVA a good financial modeling certification? Yes, FMVA. Yeah, so FMVA is for the China Corporate Finance Institute. So prior to Financial Modeling Institute, they were uh, a, an institute. They they had an online. You can go online and do a modeling course online, and then they will test you based on what they've taught you, and then they give you an FMVA. They they are very very popular, and it's an excellent uh, certificate to have. The only issue I have with that certificate is that the person training you is the person testing you. That typically is not how it works. So I can cannot come and train me as an accountant and then now test me on what he has trained. I can training me would want me to pass, obviously. So, but there should be a separation between the institute and the training bodies. So whoever the training bodies are or the people that universities or whatever that train you, there should be a separation. Uh, it can be in the same entity. But again, as you said, modeling is was just coming up and, and they are doing pretty well. So the training itself, for sure, you gain a lot from it. But I, or rather you do the Financial Modeling Institute exams uh, themselves. But they've been around longer, uh, so they're more popular. But um, I put more value on the Financial Modeling Institute's exams. You can do the training with FMVA, get the certification, but also get that uh, uh, independent examination body. Super. And um, Mr. Tairu is asking if you can recommend any software for bank reconciliation, preferably a web web-based apps <laughs> <laughs> the most popular video we have on our youtube channel is bank reconciliation really Super. you can build a software yourself let me just challenge you uh hakim because again as i said the second principle is keep it simple so you need to mm. build a model for reconciliation and this is how your model is number one identify what is unique yeah reconciling cash flow maybe with some management data against the bank data or something like that at the end of the day there must be something ident uniquely identifying a transaction for each of the something uniquely identifying transaction here and transaction here maybe deposit slip number whatever identify that unique identifier and your bank statement you can download it with that unique identifier once you've identified it there are only four possible things that can happen and you can program those four Download the data from the bank, download the data from your corporate, right? And with a field in your spreadsheet having that unique ID. Then you're asking yourself, is there a debit in the bank that was not credited in your cash? Is there a credit in the bank that was not debited in your cash? That's one. And you call it uncredited checks or whatever the accountants want to call it doesn't really matter. And then is there a credit in your cash that's not debited in your bank and there a debit in your cash that's not uh, credited, right? So those are the only four things that can happen and you can program it. So watch a video on, uh, go to my YouTube channel, Brown Consulting. There are two videos. There's one complex reconciliation and there's one simple reconciliation. And then challenge yourself to build the software yourself. Super. You can Thank build you it very much. Build it in Excel. Thank, it's fun. Yeah. Thank, you, th th thank you very much. We move on. Uh, I know time is really not our friend. What would you consider to be the future of modeling? And what are the hot trends that you see in our world today? Excellent question. Excellent question. Yeah. So uh, future of modeling. I, I think um, Excel has been the top tool for modeling. And Excel has changed. In the last two years, the changes in Excel have been massive extremely massive so you can analyze transactions that are up to a billion transactions in excel right now more than a billion transactions in excel yeah. Yeah. and excel has brought in some lots of technology which you as a modeler need to say okay how can we use this technology to make things even easier so there are things like dax there's things like power query and m which completely eliminates your VBA a lot of times. There's the power, the data model itself, which you build on Power Pivot. There is now, last two weeks, there was a function that was a new way of calculation called Lambda. Mm -hmm. This is very important, Lambda. If you write Lambda down, Lambda is you now doing, you are doing proper programming inside Excel with Lambda. So Lambda, there's something called uh, Excel is now a Turing complete 
there's something called Turing complete. Turing is a very technical term to mean that you can do loops, you can do all sorts within the same program. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's lambda, there's a new function called let, there is new functions called array functions that in fact would build serious modeling applications within your model. Then you mm -hmm. can bring in JavaScript into your Excel as well. You can bring JSON files into your Excel. You can do, so that there's a lot to do. Python and all of those things are gonna start coming in when you want your model to now start doing AI related stuff. There's so much that can happen. People are using Python to build their models fully. So Super. there's so many things happening. Uh, I don't know, Super. plenty. <laughs> David, plenty, plenty. Would I put a bit of a pause? We have a breather, very short breather. We'll come back. We conclude. Few more questions. This is ICAD on air. Please stay connected. We shall be back with you shortly. Over 360 million people. The West African sub region represents a huge but unexplored market that needs to be leveraged to achieve accelerated growth and development. However, this huge potential is challenged by poor governance, weak infrastructural and industrial base. Evidently, the need for economic prosperity in West Africa cannot be overemphasized. To this end, the Association of Accountancy Body in West Africa, ABWA, is hosting the second ECOWAS ABWA Joint Congress. Theme, good governance and sustainable development for, for regional prosperity. The date is March the 16th to the 19th, 2022. And the venue is Farmington Hotel, Monrovia, Liberia. For inquiries, please call telephone number plus 234-802-315-036. Yeah. Thanks for staying on. And um, as we now zoom towards uh, um, rounding up on this uh, program, I cannot take off from my uh, medulla six principles that you have enunciated. Um, we must visualize the model. We must think like an architect. We must keep it simple. We must always assess everything. You know, there are two sides always to things. And we must always make sure we identify the risks, look at it, go stochastic if need be, and then we must strike a balance between costs and information. Thank you very much. And I like to okay, uh, okay. Uh, lam, lam, lambda is like writing a program. Mm -hmm. Let also another complex function. Very, very, very briefly. Very, very briefly. Your comments on that. Yeah, I, I already mentioned that. So he was just repeating okay. what I mentioned. So that's yeah, oh, correct. Very true. Beautiful, beautiful. And because I know we always have you come back, let's have your final words to our audience on this subject, Mr. Yeah. So final words is really that data is the new king, really, and uh, data is the new gold as we see the top companies in the world are data companies every single organization in the world will become a data a digital organization whether you're selling tomatoes or pepper you will still be online and trying to get your customers online so you'll be a data driven business so modeling skills are highly essential for that data driven business whether you're using excel today or using python tomorrow you're doing data science as someone just said at the end of the day you're still modeling so those skill sets will be very essential how do you take data and, and look for a trigger in that data and use that trigger to make an action which is really what modeling is you're taking the historical data you're putting drivers and stuff and then pulling out forecasts so it's all similar they're all integrated think it think about it as one uh, and most importantly, uh, continue to polish your skills. You, you, you are a chartered accountant 10 years ago. You've dropped your books. Please pick them back up. Not the old books, the new ones. And then <laughs> re relearn uh, and, and continue to learn. So unlearn some old skills uh, and, and relearn and retool yourself. And uh, the world is your oyster. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. David Brown, for the insights. We're going to be calling on, on you again. We have this short window. I also want to thank our online participants for your very incisive questions. Of course, you know, we are going to be back with you um, as we move on and on. And it's not going to be the, the end, the end of the story for us in a manner of speaking. Uh, Talk about the um, Joint Equals Abwa con Congress, which is coming up, and another information that we need to pass to our members. The ICAN Malaysia International Conference for 2022 has now been rescheduled to May 16 to 19, 2022, due to COVID 19 and Omicron restrictions. And um, the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, by way of a joint hearing, uh, the Committee on Petroleum Industry Act amendments, um, the hearing is coming up on the 23rd of February 2022 at the Senate Conference Room 231, um, the Senate New Building at, at Abuja. We also like to say that, yes. We are going to continue the ICANN on Air program. Our next episode will be on Tuesday, February 24, year 2022. And our fixed time is 6 o'clock West African time. The venue will be online ICANN social media platform. The YouTube, the Facebook, the Twitter. And uh, get to like so that you can be prompted on. I always say, please mention it to a friend. We should also mention it to a friend to come and share in this wide knowledge that the Institute is sharing. And uh, the topic we are going to be looking for today will be the economic implications of COVID-19. The economic implications of COVID-19 of financial statements using credit loss model in line with IFRS 9. And we'll be guesting Ade Adebayo Abu Kabur Shuhaibu, MSC, MBA, CF, EFCTIA, FCCA, and FCA. He is Director of Finance and Admin and um, at FinPact Development Foundation and NGO created and founded by the World Food Program. He's a renowned fraud detection expert a trainer and a consultant to many organizations. Let me drop to you my quote for today. I begin the quote by saying, don't ever let your business get ahead of the financial side of your business. Accounting, accounting, accounting know your numbers end of quote and that is attributable to tailman j patita and so like we say until we come your way next tuesday february the 24th 2022 i remain akin fatunke your anchor i can on air and you uh, be the change you like to see. Bye for now. <laughs>